Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 640. Some include tides for weight loss. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. The newest drug for weight loss, it is called generically semaglutide, but it is also the the names you would know would be Ozempic, Wagovi, and Mountgero. These are three different drugs that all contain a semaglutide, and semaglutide basically is um, a uh, amino acid type of communicator that tells your brain that you're full. And when your stomach's partially full, it makes you feel like it's full. And you also control your blood sugar so that your blood sugar doesn't go way up and come way down and cause you to be really tired. So for those people who get tired in the afternoon after they eat lunch, semaglutide does help you keep your energy going so that you don't drop your blood sugar after eating lunch. It also helps diabetics. And the way it helps diabetics better than any other drug is that it also causes type 2 diabetics to lose weight. And when they lose weight, they become less diabetic, or some of them aren't even diabetic anymore. So they may go into the pre-diabetic stage, which is much easier to handle, much um, less likely to cause heart disease or uh, to cause cancer. You know, cancer loves sugar. So if you're really afraid of cancer, you should take sugar and simple carbs off your off your diet because that's very dangerous. But this is one of those things that helps you lower your lower your blood sugar, keep your blood sugar normal and stable, and also make you feel full. So you're not always hunting around for food um, and eating snacks and eating junk food to keep yourself from feeling hungry. Hunger hurts. So if we're hungry all the time, we're in pain, and we're looking for an answer to that, and so then we eat, and we usually eat the wrong thing, which makes us hungry in an hour, and then we do it again. So this is not good for your blood sugar. One of the things that we've been looking for over the past years is a medication or a um, or some kind of device to help us not feel hungry, but also to help us to lose weight. And we have found it in this medication. Now, it is not for everybody, and it is not without risk. Every medication has a risk, and this particular medication does have risks, and not everybody is going to be able to take it. So the, the, big, the big groups of people that should not take semaglutides for weight loss are type 1 diabetics, people who have essentially a... Um, pancreatic failure. They don't make enough insulin. This is, not the, this is not the type of diabetes that semaglutides were made for. But type 2 diabetes is related to weight gain. People become um, type 2 diabetics as their weight goes up. And generally, as their weight comes down, they become more in control and they have closer to normal blood sugars. So type 2 diabetics can take this. Type 1 cannot. Uh, people who have familial um, thyroid cancers should not be taking this drug. So that's, that's just one of the groups that should not take it. They have not seen this in human studies. They've seen it in animal studies. But having said that, if you are in that group, you can't take this medication. Uh, if you're in the group that has MEN1 or 2, which are... Um, Endocrine neoplasia syndromes, like cancers of all different kinds of endocrine glands, then this is not the weight loss method for you. So that's not that many people. If you think about all the people that have these different diseases, 
It doesn't exclude the majority of the population who are overweight. 50% of the population in the United States have either prediabetes or diabetes and are overweight. So this is a big problem, and we need to be able to handle this. We've never had a drug that could actually help people not eat as much, not be hungry, and lower their blood sugar. And if you're not diabetic, Wagovi is the only medication currently that is approved for just weight loss. The other two, Mountgero and, um, and uh, Ozempic, are both approved for type 2 diabetes only, not for weight loss. Even though the type 2 diabetics lose weight, they have to uh, basically be diabetic for their insurance to pay for those two drugs. And even then, it may not be paid for. If you are just looking to lose weight, then Wagovi is the uh, same drug, but it is approved by the FDA for a different use, and it is approved for weight loss. So generally, the requirements of your insurance company for you to have this drug prescribed is that you have um, a BMI um, of greater than 30 or more, so that means you are obese, <clears throat> they, you also uh, will have to have an enlarged abdominal measurement, and sometimes they even ask for your percent body fat. So these are things that your, your insurance company will require before it fills one of these medications for weight loss. And it's not like other drugs where I write a prescription, you go in, you get it paid for by your insurance. This is a drug that, because it's for weight loss and because most insurance companies don't pay for weight loss drugs, that it has to be pre-certified. Well, that means that your insurance company needs a lot of information from your doctor's office, which you may have to get from your doctor's office and send to your insurance, or your doctor's office may help you do this. Um, but it is, it is a requirement that they get the proper information to show that you actually need weight loss before you can have this medication. So if you are, you fulfill these criteria, then even then, you may not get this filled by your insurance and paid for. Now normally, that may not be a big deal, but with these drugs, it is a big deal because it is very expensive. We're talking a month of this drug could usually goes for $1,500. That's a lot. And people need three to three months to, for, I mean, some people need to be on it for a long time. And even maintenance-wise, they need to be on it. So this is not something that you can consider paying out of pocket for and, and actually get the benefit for from your insurance company. It would help you with many diseases. It would help you uh, decrease your risk of heart disease. An article just came out that said that um, type 2 diabetics who were on semaglutide of some type actually decreased their risk of having heart attacks or collecting plaque on their vessels by quite a, a high percentage. It is it would be saving lives to take this, but because it is a new drug and because the drug companies can charge whatever they want, it is exorbitantly expensive. Now, there are some ways to get around this if your insurance won't pay for it. There are some compounding pharmacies that will make this drug and that you will be able to pay for if you have a prescription from your doctor and you will be able to... Um, obtain this medication even if you're not if you're like a 29 BMI or if uh, you're not quite obese or morbidly obese but you still need to lose weight for your health then this this drug actually um, can be obtained by getting a compounded drug but that's something that is not it's hard to find a compounding pharmacy that will do that it's not going to be easy and it is going to be something that you would have to really investigate and, and investigate with your physician to find a place that would make this for you. So I'm not expecting a lot of people to do this. I think they're going to be, most patients will be waiting for their insurance to say, oh yeah, we'll pay for weight loss. 
I've never known them to pay for weight loss. So I'm not sure that that's ever going to happen. Usually if we wrote diet pills or any other pills for weight loss, it was always out of pocket. But it wasn't that expensive. It was a lot less expensive than this. Now, what happens? Just say you, you get it paid for or you pay for it yourself or whatever, and you get to your ideal weight. What happens then? Well, some people can do without this drug. They wean down lower and lower doses until they're off the drug, and they can live without it, and they don't gain their weight back. That's not everybody. Those are usually the people who have changed their lifestyle, who have started exercising, who have gotten rid of junk food, have gotten rid of snack, snack junk food. Um, not, I don't mean getting rid of nuts and, and fruit and vegetables. I'm talking about getting rid of prepackaged junk out of their lives. So they've changed their lifestyle while they were losing their weight, and they might, not everybody can do this, might be able to stay at that weight that way. Some people who have the genes for, I'm always hungry no matter what, this, this really cures that kind of um, a, a desire or a hunger. Um, and those type of people may never be able to be off of it. So it's a long-term thing. So it'll be a lower dose than when they were losing weight, but they may have to be on it for an extended period of time. So there's also a gene for, so I said, so always hungry, there's always a gene for never full. So those are the folks that you see go back over and over again for second and thirds where you kind of look at it, you go, oh my gosh, that would kill me if I ate that much. Those folks don't have an off switch and that's genetic and it, it we don't know a way to turn it off except with this drug and possibly with some other um, things that are on the horizon. But that, for you to stay the same weight at an ideal weight, you have to turn that off. So that's something this drug does, and we don't have another way to turn it off right now. So that makes this drug really important to take for long term for these folks. Diabetics may be on it for a long time. Uh, they may lose their weight, but they may not get their blood sugar back to normal, and this would be the best way to keep their weight at, um, at a reasonable level and also control their blood sugar. So that's what this, this drug is for. That's kind of how it works. It's an injection that you give yourself once a week, and all of these FDA-approved drugs, Mongero, Ozempic, and Wagovi, have pens that you use you just basically take the bottom off, put it up against you, hit a button, and it injects for you. And then some of these, some of these pens, depends on the, the uh, drug company, you just throw away. And then some of them you use for several different doses, uh, but it's just once a week. It doesn't really hurt. The needle's very tiny. Some people don't even feel it as they're injecting it. But they get the, but within 24 hours, they start feeling the effects of it, which is they're not as hungry. They aren't wandering around looking for food in the house, especially all those night eaters don't eat at night anymore, which is good because that's not a good habit. Um, but basically, when we prescribe this drug, we also tell patients there are some side effects. And one of the side effects has to do with nausea and vomiting. So there are some folks, they take this medication and they're, na they're nauseated and they vomit even if they're not overeating. There are some patients, and we don't know who's going to be who. We just, we have to try it. And then there are some patients who will get nauseated, not vomit, and they can still eat, eat some, but they're not going to eat very much, but they're nauseated all day. And that's not a good state to be in. Usually that will go away over time, but not always. So we ask patients to hang out, you know, for a week or so, maybe even the second injection and see if it goes away. But some people can't take it, don't want to take it, and just stop taking the medication. So that would be another reason somebody could not take this medication. So then we look at patients who come to us and say, oh my gosh, I have the worst reflux of my whole life. It's like I have fire going up, you know, into my esophagus, and uh, I've never had this before. It can cause that too. 
So some of those folks have to take Pepsid or they have to take some antacid or they have to take a PPI to keep them from harming their esophagus from this extra acid. See, it doesn't let your stomach empty as fast as it used to. So by not emptying and eating, it kind of fills your stomach up and pushes it up into the esophagus in your chest, and that gives you the reflux. So this is something that can be so disabling that you can't take it. And the, these are all the po these are the possibilities. Um, it puts this drug can put you at risk of getting pancreatitis. So if you've ever had pancreatitis before, you cannot take this medication because it is it will be likely to start that up again, and that's a life threatening disease. So we don't we don't give this to people who've had pancreatitis before. Uh, also. If you have gallbladder disease, not if you've had your gallbladder removed, but if you have gallstones and you have pain from your gallbladder but you haven't had it out yet, then in those cases, this can cause uh, worsening problems and can cause trouble uh, and damage to your liver. So we don't write it for people who have those kind of symptoms. And you shouldn't take it if you have those kind of symptoms. Um, so once again, we have a drug that seems to be um, a lifesaver for some people who have been obese their whole lives and need to lose weight. But it is also something that you have to be very careful about when you choose to take this medication for weight loss. Yes, weight loss does take you, take you out of the risk for some diseases when you become normal weight. But you have to balance the risks of the medication with the benefits that you'll get from, from actually losing weight. If you're diabetic, there are many different ways to treat diabetes, um, but this is the best way to lose weight and treat diabetes, and it is becoming one of the most commonly prescribed medications for diabetics who are type 2 diabetes and overweight. This is <clears throat> all of these things... Are, are issues that we've dealt with at, at our practice and are some of the people can't take this and we, are look, we look for other things that they can take. Uh, one of my patients said that when she took Ozempic, she got so constipated she couldn't have a bowel movement. And another patient said she had so much diarrhea she couldn't continue to take it because every time she ate she had diarrhea which caused her to be dehydrated and electrolytes went down. It's not healthy to do that. So you can have opposite reactions depending on your own genetic makeup and its interaction with this medication. So these are some of the things that you should think about before you decide to invest in this medication or to go to your doctor to discuss it and start taking it. I also want to stress that you need to clean up your lifestyle while you're taking it while you're not possessed with having to eat all the time, while you're not possessed with eating to make yourself feel better or get out of pain of being hungry, then you should clean your lifestyle up and change how you live, change how you shop. Don't buy the stuff in the cookies, candy, and junk food aisles. Buy the stuff in the fresh foods. Eat meals. Eat healthy snacks that are cheese or meat or vegetables or fruit or dried nuts or, I mean, something that is actually nutritious, not just something to feed your hunger. So that's something you should do during this time while you're, while you're able to control your uh, hunger. Another thing that you'll have to do <laughs> that I kind of forgot about was once you're, eat you're on this medication and you're eating and you feel full, don't eat one more bite. You're done. I don't care what's still on your plate. I don't care if you're trying to make mama happy because, you know, I'm Italian. All those, our mamas, our grandmas knew that we loved them because we fit, cleaned our plates, which means that we had a big weight problem if, if we actually did that. You can't, you can't think about that when you feel full stop. Put your food in a, you know, in a uh, container Eat it at another time, eat it for a different meal, uh, but don't continue to eat. It will make you throw up. This literally 
makes you feel full and makes your stomach think it's full. So if you eat more than that, it's going to be like Thanksgiving meals times two to your body, and, and you're just going to have to get rid of it, and that'll be vomiting. I don't want you to have to do that. So semaglutide is the, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, semaglutide is the medication. Mountgero, Ozempic, and Wagovi are the trade names for these. Mountgero is a little different. It has um, an added medication in it. It seems to be a little faster at weight loss, but honestly, how fast do you need to lose weight? I mean, you know, it's not like you need to lose a pound a day. That's not going to happen. And if you're losing weight on the uh, one of the other semaglutides, great. If you if you are not and you need more of a bump, then maybe the Mountgero would be a better idea. But once again, you have to be a diabetic to get it or to have insurance pay for it. So these are these are the kind of the good and the bad of this new medication. You should be followed by a physician. You should have your blood work done beforehand. You should have your blood work done intermittently, maybe every four months, to look at your liver enzymes, make sure your liver is healthy, make sure that you are, your hemoglobin A1C, which is your average blood sugar for three months, is actually going down. Uh, make sure that your triglycerides are coming down. Make sure that you are, with your weight loss, you are actually getting healthier. Now, in our office, we use a body composition um, uh, scale, and it tells us if we are losing fat or we're losing muscle. And oftentimes, people who lose weight after menopause or after they get older, if they're men, lose muscle if they don't have a good testosterone level. So that's another benefit for our, for our um, or another reason we like using testosterone for both men and women is we help them lose weight and just lose fat. They maintain most of their muscle. So it, it's much better for their bodies to maintain muscle because that's where you burn your calories. I hope this answered all your questions about semaglutide or one of these medications. I hope this helps you decide whether you want to try this or not, or you want to even talk to your doctor. But I want to re reiterate, it is not a fad. This is not like, you know, getting um, caffeine diet pills. Don't. This is, this is serious medicine, and you should take it seriously, and you should take your weight loss seriously. So thank you for listening. I hope this helps you make your decisions. I'll see you in two weeks. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.